Good to see you. I'm Pastor Mark, and uh, welcome here in November. We've, uh, Pastor Jeremy and I have talked about kind of having a series of sermons that kind of touch on that concept of harvest. We figured it's fall, it's autumn, it just kind of fit really well. Although I have to say, I was uh, watching some college football yesterday, and I noticed all the people in the stands, and just not right away, just halfway through the game, it kind of dawned on me. They were just bundled up, man, gloves and scarves and heavy coats, and I hope it's not a sin to just kind of snicker a little bit at them. <laughs> I hope that's not. Uh, but we're enjoying it. It is autumn. It is the season here, and uh, we're talking about, again, different things uh, that Jesus taught that kind of touched on the concept of harvest. Of course, you know, it was a very agrarian society then, and so not all of those lessons, those analogies he used really translate into our lives today just clearly. So we're going to look at the gospel reading again, and we're going to kind of break it down. But what I'm really going to talk to you today is about weeds. probably didn't think when you got out of bed this morning, you're going to talk about weeds when you came to church. That's exactly what Jesus talks about in this parable today. You may have remembered this parable as the, the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the weeds, different names, different translations. But essentially, the point is that uh, there's weeds in our society, there's weeds that crop up in our own personal lives, and Jesus has some advice for us. The first question, though, is uh, what is a weed? The definition is actually more tricky than you might think for natural weeds, but also when we get into supernatural weeds we're going to talk about. Um, according to botanists, there are about 250,000 plant species on the planet. Of those, 8,000 are considered to be weeds. Now, again, according to the Weed Science Society of America, now, <laughs> do you see how much research I do for you every week? <laughs> every week. Nose in the book. Okay. According to the WSSA, there are about 312 types of weeds in the United States. Now, the, the, their definition of a weed, again, to show you how uh, fluid this is, is any plant that is growing where you don't want it to. They basically call it any undesirable plant. And that's a pretty broad definition, but they do give some characteristics. They list some characteristics. They say some uh, weeds typically have uh, an abundance of seeds, right? They just, they multiply like rabbits. Um, weeds grow really fast. Weeds have an elaborate or a, a long root system compared to their size that gets in and chokes out, of course, the desirable plants. And weeds are also considered uh, to be any plant that causes harm to people or animals. So I learned this week, and now you're about to learn too, poison sumac. That's a weed. Did not know that. All right. Uh, Anything that uh, inhibits the harvest, uh, yeah, reduces the, the uh, output, the crop that the, the farmers would want. Those are all considered weeds. Now, in Tennessee, where I'm from, it was really easy to spot the weeds from my Bermuda grass. Very easy. But there's a weed in Palestine that would often crop up in the midst of wheat fields, and they're called tears. Now, of course, when the blade shoots out of the ground, they're virtually identical. You can't tell them apart. But even as they mature, you can see the wheat and the tear, how similar they look. Very similar. Not until the very, very end, the harvest time, when the grain is ready to be uh, harvested, uh, can you really distinguish between the two plants. Now, again, was Jesus literally telling us about how to be a farmer in Palestine and weeds? And, no, of course not. This is a parable, and parables are times when Jesus would take something that's true in our world, and he would use it to try to teach us about something that's true in our spiritual world, our spiritual existence. And so one of the things that he's talking about right here, if the wheat and the weeds here are so hard to distinguish, so Jesus is not talking to us today today about blatant evil, the evil you see on TV every night, right? It just sticks out like a sore thumb. It's easy. Oh, that's terrible. 
He's talking about the evil in our society and in our own lives that likes to deceive us, that tries to blend in, tries to not be noticed, just hang out in the background. Hard to tell, hard to tell. Which is it? Which is it? So these types of weeds I'm talking about today, uh, there's a number of examples in our world today, but sometimes people can be these kinds of weeds. Think about very difficult people. Maybe people that start off as uh, seem very trusting and trustworthy, and later on you found out they'll stab you in the back at the drop of a hat. Could be people that start off, they seem to be very nice, and well, they're just so chatty, and, they, and then they turn out to be, well, let's just call them emotional vampires that suck the life out of you. People can be, can be types of weeds. Uh, weeds can grow up in our own lives. Again, these are subtle things, but personal habits, personal addictions, uh, emotional health. Pastor Jeremy prayed about or fear or anxiety and worry or depression. These are weeds that grow up very slowly, very quietly, and can very, very easily choke the life out of you, choke the joy out of your life. Anything, basically, that is a, a, a pest in this sense uh, to your joy and your peace of God. Could be being just overtaxed with to dos and chores. Could be too much debt, being overburdened in that way. Uh, things, again, that choke out our happiness, our joy. So, some of the things that Jesus tells us now about, about weeds the first one, maybe not very popular, but it's the most obvious one. In this life, you will have weeds. Right? The, the farmer, the workers in the field, they want these things, they want them in there, and you know what? It's just a part of life. And not only are there always going to be people in our lives, and say, all right, not every plant is a weed, right? But any plant could be undesirable, depending on the time, circumstance. Okay, well, not every one of your friends, not every person in the world is a bad person, but... Any person could be a weed at the wrong place in the wrong time. And if we're going to be honest, we can be a weed in someone else's life at the wrong place in the wrong time. And they would want to get rid of us, maybe temporarily or maybe even for a longer period of time. Not super popular, not really exciting, I know. But this is the reality that we all need to face. Weeds, as long as we're on this earth, weeds are going to be a part of this life. Uh, we have an enemy who wants to harm us, and there are just effects of our own sinfulness and evil that reverberate through the world, through society, affect other people. Now, there are, of course, uh, some weeds planted by the enemy very intentionally for the purpose of hurting us. And we spent a whole series, I think, talking about kind of spiritual warfare, how we have a very real enemy whose only goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. And we should never underestimate his underhandedness when it comes to sowing seeds of, of broken relations, spite, jealousy, grief, anger. Uh, very intentional. Now, these seeds are not sown by God. These weeds are not planted by the Lord. So I'll say that twice. In the parable, we know they are planted by the enemy. And we have examples of these types of weeds throughout all of history. For the ancient Israelites, it was the weeds of the Philistines. Whether they were clashing on the battlefield or they were drawing the Israelites away from the faith in the one true God. For Samson, it was a very alluring weed, maybe like a dandelion, huh? Uh, called Delilah. Uh, for Mordecai and Esther's very evil weed named Haman. 
Do you remember the rich young ruler that came to talk to Jesus uh, the, about how do I get into heaven? And Jesus said, give up everything you own, come follow me. And he just walked away sad because the weed in his life was the love of money. It was more important than anything. Of course, the Pharisees, the, uh, the foils, the old uh, bad guys in the New Testament, the, their, their weed, uh, weeds, probably, arrogance and self-righteousness were shown very clearly. Weeds are part of life. Weeds are all around us. So what's Jesus' advice for dealing with them? Well, the first thing we learn today in this parable is be careful what you cut out. Be very careful. Uh, verses 28 and 29, the servants asked him, the farmer, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. It could be because they're all entangled together at this point. It could be that it was still difficult to tell them apart. You might accidentally grab wheat while you're out there. But the, the point is, don't be rash. right? Give it time. Be careful. Be careful what you cut out. There's a, a really good story, an account that happened with the disciples when they were following Jesus in uh, Luke chapter 9. Uh, they go into a, a Samaritan village as the disciples go ahead to kind of prepare the way there, and the Samaritan said, we don't, we don't want to meet Jesus, we want to hear Jesus. And so, uh, so they went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him, but the people did not welcome him. So when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they had said, Lord... Do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever look around and be like, this is evil, this is ridiculous. Come on, wipe them out, get rid of them, uproot them. Jesus rebuked them and said, no, no, it's not time. In the, in the parable, uh, the farmer knew that in the long run they were going to do way more harm than good by pulling up the weeds too soon. Be patient. Uh, the other advice we get from Jesus is that we just need to let things mature. See, given enough time, everyone's true colors will be revealed. Giving time, uh, everybody will mature into what they are and will be easily seen. And this is actually uh, the same advice that one of the rabbis... His name was Gamaliel. He gave to the and his most highly respected rabbi of his day, uh, to the Sanhedrin, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. See, Jesus has been crucified and risen. Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has come down. And all these disciples who had followed Jesus, who were afraid because they were going to kill them too, they weren't afraid anymore. And they were going around telling people about Jesus. Hey, listen, my Jewish friends, the, the, God has sent the Messiah. We met him. He, he died on the cross for your sins, and he rose from the dead. We saw him with our own eyes. We even ate, we had fish with him on the beach. He is alive. And all these people got so excited and started following, and they started telling more people, and miracles were happening all over the place. And so you can imagine these religious leaders, they'd just gotten rid of Jesus. They just ended this movement, and they're like, what is going on? We've got to stop this. So they arrest some of the disciples. And they think, what are we going to do? We, we, we're going to kill him. That's what we're going to do. We'll ki we kill Jesus. We'll kill him. That'll be the end of it. So here's Gamaliel. He stands up. He starts off talking about other people before Jesus who had stood up and said that they were the Messiah. He, there was another Judas. There was, a, there was a Simon. There was a John. You remember? He had all these followers and this, this big thing. But then they died. And then everybody dispersed. It just the whole movement died. And so he says, I advise you, just leave these men alone, the disciples of Jesus. Leave them alone. Let them go. Because if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it's from God, you're not going to be able to stop them. Don't do anything rash. Not every so-called emergency needs a rapid response. Be patient. 
Let things mature. And then the third thing I learned here, and maybe this is more of a side note, but uh, being first, it's not always a good thing. You know, in a society that's got to be the top of the class, you got to be the top, the best sport or team in your sport, you got to be the best grades, everything, the first of this, the first of that. Well, did you notice in the parable which got pulled up first, the wheat or the weeds? It's the weeds. And then what happened to the weeds? They were collected, tied into bundles, and tossed in the fire to be burned. Not always good to be first. But what happened with the wheat? Continuing on in verse 30. The farmer told his workers, gather the wheat into my barn. Gather it in my barn where it will nourish people. It will provide seed for the next year's crop. It will bring prosperity and honor to the farmer. There's one more example I want to give you about dealing with weeds. And Jesus always is the consummate example. We're going to be imitators of him primarily. That's our goal. There's a lot of times in his life on earth that he dealt with weeds. Uh, but one of the times that stands out to me was when he was on trial. It was a joke of a trial. They had false witnesses. They had false evidence. They just lied, trumped up charges. Um, and the judge, his name was Pilate, he knew. He could figure it out. He's not dumb. He's like, this, is, this guy hadn't done anything wrong. These guys just don't like him. And so he tried multiple times to release him, to turn him loose. And finally, as was kind of his last-ditch effort, he took out this prisoner whose name was Barabbas. He was a murderer. And he said, okay, for your big holiday today, feast day, I'll release a prisoner to you, one of our political prisoners or whatever that Rome had. He said, I can release to you Jesus, who's harmless. Maybe you don't like him, but harmless. Or I'll release Barabbas, you know, the murderer. You guys pick. And you know what the crowd said? Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. And then the judge, he said, well, what do you want me to do with this guy, Jesus? They said, crucify him. Crucify him. You see in the artwork, Barabbas there, freed, everybody excited around him. And look, way in the background, you can see Jesus being led away to the cross. Now, why didn't Jesus just pull all those weeds up out of the ground right then and there? He could have called down fire from heaven and annihilated them. He could have called on his angels, angel armies, come in and just mow them down, pun intended. Why didn't he? Well, about 50 days after this mock trial, it's what we call the day of Pentecost, Penta, 5, 50 days after this. Uh, and on the day of Pentecost, some of these very people received the Holy Spirit, received the gift of faith in Jesus, and they repented of being weeds. And we're miraculously transformed into wheat. We're talking spiritual, right? You got me? Now, look at that picture, and you tell me who's who. Which, which are the ones that are going to end up repenting and believing in Jesus? And which ones won't? Peter is one of Jesus' closest friends closest disciples, and he tells us, uh, he has some good words for us about the weeds in our life, the sufferings in our world. He just simply says, this is the message translation, uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, he is restraining, God is restraining himself on account of you, holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. 
He's giving everyone space and time to change. Now, this isn't the most popular thing about being a Christian. I, as much as anybody in this room, uh, feel very angry. We'll call it righteous indignation. When I say evil in this world, and I want it to be blotted out. But it's not my job to pull out the weeds. It's my job to love them, to tell them about Jesus. You say, it'll always be a weed. Yep. With men, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. He's the one that transformed your heart, after all, and my heart, too. It's not a popular thing to say, but God never promised us comfort in this world. Comfort's not one of the things that we can hold on to. He promises peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, human understanding, human reason, a peace that knows that God is God and he is in control and he is love and he's going to take care of you. And honestly, it kind of makes me feel better. Maybe this is a sin too, but he's going to take care of them too, right? Do you remember? The weeds, finally, they do get pulled out and they do get burned, annihilated in God's time. Okay, comfort's not promised, but peace is and joy is promised to us. What's the difference between happiness and joy? We use them interchangeably at our own risk. Happiness is about the happenings around us, where the word comes from. Happiness is uh, your mood according to the happenstance, according to what's going on around you. Joy is from within, the, the spirit of God that is within you. That no matter what's happening around you, you know you are loved dearly, you are cared for here and forever, forever. And that's when we're in the barn with the wheat, that's where the comfort comes in, the perfect peace, all of that. Yeah, but right now, our job isn't to go ripping out weeds and burning weeds. And our job is to go out and love them, be patient with them. Long, Actually, this is the message. In the King James uh, Bible, translation of the Bible, the, the, the word for patience, there's long-suffering. God is long-suffering. Because he wants everybody to hear the gospel. He wants everybody to be saved. And that means we got to deal with weeds. We just got to. That's a part of our life. But we can do it with the peace and love that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah, amen. All right, let me pray with you, and then we'll uh, stand up for our last song here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, you are uh, the farmer in that parable, and you are wise, and you are patient, and you are bringing forth a, an abundant crop uh, for your glory and your honor. And uh, we pray that uh, we would be faithful uh, workers in, in your harvest fields, uh, sharing your love in our words and also in our actions, the patience that we have uh, with people, even those annoying people that uh, are in our lives. Uh, give us that patience to, to work with them too. Uh, Lord, we uh, just pray your blessings upon everybody this week. We pray you keep everybody safe and in good health. And uh, to you, Lord, we give you all the praise and glory forever and ever. Amen.